Good news, everyone. Blender is coming to iPad. Well, tablets. They put out a little notice. There's a blog post on code.blender.org. So we're going to have a little read for it. And they've also done a couple of social posts, which are quite fun. But it comes at a funny time because I got a comment from someone recently basically asking, how would I use my iPad with Blender? It's something I hadn't really looked into. There are some like solutions for using it as an extended display for your desktop, whether it's Windows or it's easier with Mac. But, you know, there's a demand for it. So it's cool to see that they're thinking not specifically in terms of extending from a computer, but actually putting actual Blender on the devices. So on code.blender.org, they've done a few mock-ups and given a little little bit of info it's still early days but they are playing with mock-ups here's Yalti. i never know if i pronounce that right but hey ho multi-touch interfaces like tablets have been common for years but only recently thanks to increased processing power such as with like you know the m2 chips and all that they've started to serve as primary computing devices it's also kind of um highlighted by the fact that apple are trying to like macify the ipad in the future and i mean it kind of makes sense i've only had mine for a little while i've been using it for like university pre-learning studies and stuff like that but it is actually quite powerful for 3D work because I've been playing around with Nomad as well. Do you know that one? The sculpting app? Surprisingly fast, actually. So it'd be interesting to see how Blender holds up. To support Blender's mission of making 3D technology accessible to everyone, it's important to fully embrace these platforms. Some of these devices include Apple iPad, Microsoft Surface, Huawei MatPad, and the Wacom Move Ink Pad. I haven't even heard of that one, among others. The idea is to bring the full power of Blender to these devices, so that's something to highlight. It's not going to be a stripped down version of Blender as such. They were going to go into it with the mindset of Blender as is should be accessible on the iPad. So not babifying the software. That's one way to think about it. But on top of having just Blender, there's going to be a user interface design consideration for tablet accessibility. Uh, they'll talk about this in the blog post. We probably won't read the whole thing. So this requires adapting to platform specific paradigms, but also to offer more task oriented user interfaces with reduced information density. Obviously, because the screens are not as big as computer monitors and we don't have like many of them we can stack together. In a way, it might be an interesting exercise on the Blender development side to learn from adapting it for tablets to pick up lessons in like optimizing information display because I'm sure there's room for improvement in general Blender interface anyway. This will be achieved by extending existing input methods and improving workspaces and application templates running on top of a regular Blender build. So they're going to test it with the iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil. This might be the first time I can actually like follow along and test out builds as they try that. I'm not really one for picking up many Apple products, but I did hear a lot about the iPad and the Apple Pencil, and I've been quite impressed with it. But there are certain design considerations, as they said. So for example, this is Nomad Sculpt, right? And you can, you know, sculpt around all your stuff. There's pressure sensitivity and all that. But the interface has been designed in a way where it's considerate of where your hands need to be placed. So you've got like the intensity slider, you've got the radial slider, and then you've also got what they call sub, which is basically the equivalent of holding control, like in Blender Sculpting. So we'll do the inverse and smooth there. So if you're thinking about the kind of handheld real estate of the screen, how do you imagine Blender being used? Because we're typically used to, in default layouts for Blender, we've got properties, outliners on the right side, tools on the left side. So you want that accessible to your hands without taking up much of the screen. And that's what we're about to see because they've been drafting up some mock-ups of how to do that, how to adapt it for the tablets. So we're going to scroll down a bit. This is a breakdown of product design considerations taking into account when thinking about what is Blender on a tablet. They don't want there to be any distinction between desktop or tablet users. Again, like a tablet version of Blender won't be like a child-friendly version. It'll be full on Blender, you know, professional tool set, integrating into workflows. It's for artists that need a pen device for specialized tasks, painting, sculpting, 2D animation, artists that have tablets as their main device, and artists that need Blender on the go. While the ultimate goal is a complete Blender experience, the initial focus will be on basic object manipulation and sculpting. These will be followed by Grease Pencil. Obviously, Grease Pencil lends itself really well to tablet and pen pressure type functionality. And Storyboarding, which makes sense, which are slightly more advanced as they require animation tools. So here we go about the user interface and experience. Working on a standalone tablet it comes with its own set of software and hardware limitations, such as single full screen window workflow, relatively small screen real estate, no keyboard a mouse out of the box but it should be optional so obviously with a lot of tablets you can plug in keyboards or things like this so this is the apple magic keyboard where you can attach the ipad up here and then it auto connects and then off you go full functional keyboard 
multi-input interface, so touch and pen, limited processing power and battery. Again, that depends on the tablet, but it would be nice not to kind of discriminate between the different tablets based on their power. Realistically, users should be able to push it to the limit if they want to. And a siloed file system, because, you know, in a lot of tablets, it's kind of like a closed off system, difficult to access files on a granular level. Some tablets can be paired with a keyboard and trackpad accessory. And in that case, they should provide the same experience as working on desktop. So with that in mind, again, if I was to plug in the Magic Keyboard, with the iPad. At the moment, this is just the regular folio. But if I took this off, quickly shoved it on here, then in theory, I should just be able to use Blender on here as I would on the computer, much like as I am here with Nomad Sculpt. So here are the mockups. Here are a few exploratory mockups showing how the UI and the interaction could look like on an iPad. This will obviously change in the future because it's just basically conceptual at the moment, but this is basically the initial direction that they want to go in. These current mockups try to convey how Blender could adapt to run in a single area layout. So this might not be exactly what it would look like because again, you want full Blender, but they're thinking, okay, well, if we were going for maximum usefulness in terms of like maximizing the screen space, what would that kind of interface look like? Again, I just showed you Nomad and you know how you've got like the interface on the border of the screen. So your kind of thumbs are at the ready. This would be the Blender version. So this mockup illustrates kit bashing, making use of an asset library. Let's watch. So they've got like an asset shelf at the bottom. We are familiar with these user interface sections at the top. On the right, there's a button for the outliner and the properties editor and the other kind of tool side panels. They're dragging in a material and now also objects, just like the asset browser lets you do. Modifying the gizmos from this perspective, we can see at the top we've got the snapping features and our regular tools along the right. But then also notice they've got this section down here. I imagine it would be nice to have this movable, but it allows you to shift or control and access a quick menu. A lot of apps have this thing. It is best when it is movable because you know you can throw it around the screen. Some people are like left-handed, some are right-handed. So yeah, it's a good mock-up. This demo shows custom applications template, a wheel menu window overlay. That's what we're talking about. Sidebar tabs use icons yeah, because text would take up too much space. Then quick access to the outliner and properties editor in the 3D viewport. Here's a mockup for what sculpting could look like. They don't actually sculpt in this mockup. It's just an interface demonstration. So you still have access to like file management in the top, access to brushes potentially, maybe even on the asset shelf, who knows? But you click on a brush, you can get the asset settings. Again, outliner properties on the right, some rendering and other tool information to the upper right as well. So again, in principle, it could work quite well. It'd also be interesting to see whether that is strictly landscape or whether it could be adaptive to portrait as well. Who knows? This demo shows menus collapse by default, helper overlay with curated shortcuts, tool panel moved from the sidebar tab into a floating pop-up, tool settings header has been removed. Basically any extra relevant information is a pop-up. So they want to maintain parity with Blender as is. So as new features are added to Blender, this should keep up. Again, not a simplified version of the software, but actual Blender just seen through the lens of a new application template to make it more usable for tablets. Many of the usability improvements will also benefit the desktop version of Blender. For example, a quick favorites editor, helper overlay with curated shortcuts, icon support for sidebar tabs, and toggleable sidebar tabs, which are already in the Blender 5.0 alpha, which is cool. Again, as we said, some things will be specific to the devices, like multi-touch events and gestures. So, you know, like navigation, using your fingers, panning around, maybe like undoing with certain taps and stuff like that. Handling and multiple active editor slash regions. So with that, I'm not sure if this is what they're talking about, but in Blender, there's a context system where typically there's only like one active area of the interface at once. There are caveats to that. So that might be suggesting that given how you can have like multi-touch gestures on a iPad, then in that way, the context might require multiple active editors at the same time. So there might be like a kind of philosophical redesign slightly of how context works. A wheel menu and an interactive status bar, i.e. tap the shortcut labels toggle. They suggest that the tablet specific application template should be available in both the desktop and tablet versions of Blender. Again, trying not to make things exclusive to one or the other. Work that is done everywhere should be kind of mutually beneficial towards the central development of Blender. Development is taking place on a separate branch. Developers with extensive experience in this area who are interested in contributing are encouraged to reach out via chat.blender.org or the DevTool forums. So if you have experience building for iOS, particularly in relation to, you know, 3D software, then you might be interested in getting involved. Specifically, they are very interested in people who can help with building Blender, touch events and gesture support, file system, iCloud and AirDrop support, and open subdiv. Imagine AirDropping a 3D model. 
And then finally, a tech demo will be available at the Blender booth at SIGGRAPH 2025 in Vancouver, showing Blender running on an iPad Pro. Shortly after, a workshop will be held at Blender HQ in Amsterdam to revisit the current design and workflows. The outcome of the workshop will be shared here on the development channels, and you may also be able to see live demos during the Blender Conference 2025, which is in September this time rather than October. Speaking of the Blender Conference, I probably won't be going again this year. Again, there's just a lot going on, and the month after that, I'm starting university. And Unless something changes at the last minute because I do miss meeting people. So I would like to, but again, if there were such events hosted in London, I would be there every single time. They used to be, but obviously, you know, self-hosting events like that is a complicated task and it requires, you know, a lot of money as well. But I do wish there were more London-based events. It's such a central thing that's easy for people to get to. Obviously, I'm biased. I grew up in London, but like I've met and shown around like most of my Blender like YouTube friends. I've shown them around the city. We've had a nice time. Obviously, there's the American Blender conference that's hosted by Autotroph as well, the people behind Superhive, CG Cookie, etc. But that's kind of like moving around the US, it seems. But, you know, Amsterdam, it's a little bit annoying to get to from here. Even though we're really close, I'm basically going to give myself away. But I'm not that far away from Amsterdam. But the train is a hassle. I don't want to be like, you know, stuck up or something. But suppressed immune system, I don't like being crowded in with people. The trains can be disgusting. I don't want to fly because too many planes are falling out of the sky nowadays. And also airports are a hassle. I would get a ferry, but the closest ferry is north of England. And it's a really long overnight. So it's actually weirdly difficult from the position that I'm in to get to Amsterdam. Even though when you look on a map, it's just like there. I have thought about chartering a private plane at some point, but again, like the small planes, I don't trust them. There is an airfield nearby, I could technically do it, but I just don't like the risk. I could get someone to chauffeur me, like all the way by a car to Amsterdam, but I get very travel sick. So again, if we can get a London one happening sometime, I will be there all the time. So anyway, whoever's going to Amsterdam this year, I hope you have a lovely time. And I'm sorry if I can't make it. There are a lot of people that went last time I really wanted to meet. If you made it this far through the video, put a pen related emoji in the comments so I can see if you made it this far. Obviously pen because of tablet pens, Apple Pencil Pro. Alternatively, you can put a different emoji in the comments. Damn, I don't even know if you can see it. But you know how the unicorn is our default emoji on this channel? I may have got the pen engraved with the unicorn emoji, but you just can't really tell. All right, I'll see you next time.